SteamOS was officially released for the Legion Go S, and I can tell you that with it installed here, it does make this a whole new device. I'm actually seeing some really decent performance here for what we have, and keep in mind, this is the version with the Ryzen Z2 Go. When this was initially released with Windows, performance was very subpar. I even installed Bazai, and we tested an older build of SteamOS. It wasn't doing great then, but with what Valve has done now, I do think that this is a viable Steam Deck competitor. And by competitor, I don't mean they're going to be going head to head because Valve is making money no matter what. If you're running Steam, you're buying games from Steam on another device running SteamOS, Valve is still making money from each game sold. So they're not worried about this thing cutting into Steam Deck profits because they're already selling the Steam Deck at a lower cost and they kind of subsidize that price knowing that you're going to buy games on their platform. So I think that Valve is definitely welcome to other devices running SteamOS, and that's why we have the first one here with the Legion Go S. In this video, we're going to be testing on the Legion Go S with 32 gigs of RAM and the Z2 Go, and that's because all of the other ones are delayed or preparing to be shipped. I've purchased the Z1 Extreme version with Steam, the Z1 Extreme version with Windows, and the official SteamOS version with 16 gigs of RAM and the Z2 Go, but as you can see, they're preparing or being a bit delayed. So I'll have those in a few days and we'll kind of do a comparison. But when it comes down to it, the only difference between this and the official SteamOS version is the RAM amount. We've actually got more RAM with this one, 32 gigs versus 16, but we've got the same exact APU. It's the AMD Ryzen Z2 Go. Four cores, eight threads, and a 12 compute unit RDNA 2i GPU. From the BIOS, I've gone in and I've dedicated 16 gigs of the 32 we have here with this version to VRAM. And uh, one cool thing is, as soon as I installed SteamOS, it actually had a firmware update. So it updated the BIOS through SteamOS. I didn't have to go back and install Windows to get the latest GoS BIOS. Thought that was pretty cool. And I'm really glad to see a real officially supported SteamOS device here. And we've got full TDP control directly from within SteamOS. We've got a low power mode, which is going to be 10 watts. Balanced is 15, performance is 30, and a custom anywhere from 5 to 40. And I think that's plugged into the wall because right now on battery, I can go anywhere from 5 up to 33 watts. And we can set a lock on the GPU clock to 2200 megahertz. And another cool thing here is our Legion button up here will tell us what power mode we're in. So we've got a balanced mode, low power, and red is going to be our performance. Purple is going to be our custom, and we can fully customize that through SteamOS. Now, in this video, I kind of wanted to get an idea of how this compares to the Steam Deck OLED when it comes to running at a 15 watt TDP. Of course, we can go much higher with this, up to 40 watts plugged into the wall, and it's definitely going to give us a little better performance, but you're not going to get great battery life like that because we've only got a 55.5 watt hour battery. So far, I've actually been having a blast with the Legion Go S and SteamOS installed on it. And the first thing I want to do here is actually show you a few games running on this device. Then we're going to move into a side-by-side -side comparison between this and the Steam Deck OLED at a 15 watt TDP. And we're also going to get an idea of how much battery life we could get out of this thing. First game we have is Spider-Man 2. And when this was initially released, we tested this game out in Windows and Steam. It did seem to perform a little better in Steam but even just totally maxed out at 40 watts, very low settings with frame gen off, we had a hard time hitting 60 FPS. But now in performance mode, which is gonna take us up to around a 30 watt TDP when it needs it, low settings, FSR set to balanced, and FSR frame gen on, we're seeing an average of around 73 FPS. And I know people don't like frame gen, but with a low power device like this, it's something that can really help out. Sometimes it works out really well, sometimes it doesn't, but at those higher wattages with frame gen enabled, it can get you that frame rate you're looking for. I also wanted to throw at least one fighting game in, so we have Street Fighter 6. We're at a 15 watt TDP, so we're in balanced mode right now. Medium settings, 800p, and it's running really well at 60 FPS. Now it's time to move into some side-by-side -side benchmark comparisons between the Steam Deck OLED and the Legion Go S with that Z2 Go. 
We're at 720p and I run at 16 by nine with these benchmarks because I can face this off against something like the ROG Ally X later on with a 16 by nine aspect ratio. But with Black Myth Wukong at 720p, low settings, 15 watt TDP, no frame gen, average of 49 FPS on the Steam Deck OLED, and an average of 49 FPS on the Legion Go S. Of course, with a little more wattage thrown at it, the Legion Go S can do a bit better, but not by much. Actually, in performance mode, I only had an average of 54 FPS. Next up, we've got the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and one thing I wanted you to take a look at was the total power draw. These are right on par with each other. You can see over on the left with the Steam Deck, 25.2, fluctuating a bit, and with the Legion Go S, 25.2, 25.6, give or take a few points between the two, but they are kind of on par with each other when it comes to battery draw. But with Shadow of the Tomb Raider 720p, low settings, 15 watt TDP, on the Steam Deck OLED, we averaged 56 FPS, on the Legion Go S, 59 FPS. So the Legion Go S is coming ahead by about 3 FPS, which isn't a ton, but the last one I wanted to run here was Cyberpunk 2077. Using the Steam Deck preset at 720, using the Steam Deck preset at 720p, usually when we're running this on the Steam Deck, it's locked at 30 FPS, but I've unlocked that frame rate just to see how high we could take in. And I'm not exactly sure if the Legion Go S is coming ahead because we've got a lot more RAM here coming in with 32 gigs versus 16 in total with the Steam Deck OLED, but it's a nice little jump at that same TDP. Because on the Steam Deck OLED, we had an average of 44 FPS. Remember we're at 720, Steam Deck preset, 15 watt TDP. Legion Go S with 32 gigs in that Z2 Go, we had an average of 50. So, I mean, locking this down at 45 is gonna be possible on the Legion Go S. With the Steam Deck OLED, we're gonna be hard pressed to get up to that mark. But another thing we gotta keep in mind is with the Steam Deck OLED, we're locked at 15 watts. We can go below that, but we can't go higher. With the Legion Go S, if you don't mind sacrificing some battery life, you can get much better performance out of it. Because in performance mode, at that Steam Deck preset 800p using frame gen, we can get around 84 FPS on average. So we're way up there with it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is frame generation, but again, with these lower powered handhelds, with these IGs, it's something that can really help out. If you don't mind locking this down at 40, 45 FPS, you could definitely do it with no frame gen. But if you're looking to get on up there like this, it's actually really awesome to have that option. So the last thing I wanted to take a look at was a little bit of indie gaming, and this is just really for battery life. Right now, I'm using a custom 7 watt TDP here. We've got the screen brightness set at 50%, and if you take a close look, we're drawing a total of 9.6 watts from the battery. Sometimes I did see it jump up to around 10, but on average, around 9.6 watts. We've got a 55 watt hour battery, and I've gone through and tested some other games at different power profiles. And with the Go S, we've got a 55.5 watt hour battery. Through my testing, screen brightness was at 50%. Custom 7 watt indie gaming draws around 9.6 watts. That's over five hours of runtime out of this thing. Balance mode, which is a 15 watt TDP. AAA gaming pulls around 24 watts, looking at two hours and 19 minutes. And in performance mode on battery, 30 watt TDP, looking at an average total draw while playing AAA games of around 37 watts. It's around an hour and 20 minutes. One thing I wish they would have done with the Legion Go S was add a 65 watt hour battery, but we've got a 55.5 watt, and I know they did it to kind of keep that cost down. So the Legion Go S is much improved with SteamOS installed. And as soon as I get my hands on the official, you know, blue or nebula blue version with SteamOS out of the box, we will do a bit of a comparison. I suspect we're gonna see around the same kind of performance. Now there might be some newer games that need a little more VRAM and you could get better performance with something like this because we've got 32 gigs. But I know a big question that a lot of people are gonna be asking is, is it better than a Steam Deck OLED? And in my opinion, no, mainly because of the display. With the Steam Deck OLED, we've got a 7.4 inch, obviously OLED display. 
It's only up to 90 hertz. The Go S is up to 120, but with the power both of these are putting out, there's not a lot of newer games that we're gonna be running at 120. Indie games can do it, but I mean, we've got more than enough refresh rate over on the Steam Deck OLED right now. The version of the Go S I'm really excited about has the Z1 Extreme, and I know we've seen it in a lot of handhelds. Uh, I cannot wait to get my hands on it, but it is delayed right now. I just can't get it to ship any faster. I will have the Windows version with the Z1 Extreme. We could test SteamOS on that, but yeah, if there's anything else you want to see running on any of the versions of the Go S, let me know in the comments below. And I will have more videos coming later this week, but I wanted to give you a look at this running on it because it does make this a very usable handheld right now. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.